show you how to make a simple towel holder for your uh, kitchen towel. So this is the style where you put your towel through instead of working directly into the towel. And I'm using a large wood ring. You need a ring, and you can do this if you can find a metal one that's the right size. And I'll link these below. But it needs to, to be big enough for the towel to come through. So this one full diameter is almost two and a half inches. And then now let's look at the inside where we've got, let's see, one, about one and two thirds, one and three quarter inch opening. And to make sure I don't take up any extra space in the opening, I'm using a category three yarn. And the one I'm using, you wanna use cotton or a natural yarn that is heat resistant and um, durable. So I'm using, uh, this is Cotton Bamboo from LB Collection. That's a Lion Brand yarn. And this color is called, I believe it's Snapdragon. And I wanted this color specifically. This is in my stash already, but it matches the color green that I have accenting in my home. And then I'm going to also use my absolute favorite hook, the uh, Atimo Tulip red series and i like this hook there's lots of reasons i like this brand or this the red in particular this is very smooth and this yarn i love this yarn but it can be prone to splitting like a lot of the natural fiber yarns are and this uh really helps uh, minimize any kind of splitting so to get started so you see i have that uh knot on my hook the slip knot and i'm just going to single crochet all the way around just to get the yarn onto the hook, or onto the, um, the hook, onto the circle, onto the wooden loop. And make sure that I keep the, um, the chains straight up at the top up here so that I can work into them later. And I'm going to keep working all the way around. This will take me a few minutes because it's such a big hook and then I'll come back and show you how to work the next round. All right, so I finished my round. I just checked that I don't have gaps, everything's smooth and together. And let's find that first stitch. So I'm going to yarn over, no chaining, just yarn over and start working. Whoops, that's not in the stitch, that's under the stitch. Into the first stitch of this tail. Pull up a loop and work half double crochet. Actually, let's weave that in now. Yarn over, go into the next stitch, and half double crochet. So mine, look, with it being green, it looks like a wreath. Yours will too, actually, no matter what color you make. Pull up, work half double crochet. So I'll just keep doing this all the way around so that I have a round of half double crochet on top of that single crochet that I just made. Very simple. From here, I'm going to uh, slip to join and then start working on the strap. So let's talk about how long to make this strap. Depending on where you're going to hang it, uh, there isn't a huge amount of variance in uh, oven handles, refrigerator doors, and towel racks but you, you just never know. So I'm gonna use this one as a reference. So this is the um, Christmas Candy King uh, 
hanger that goes with the pot holder set and they're both free patterns here on the channel now this strap here this work fits great around my fridge and my uh, oven door this would not go in my bathroom on the towel rack so take your tape measure and check so here I'm just checking from here to here so I'm at about five inches but I also need a little extra room for the button area for the closure. So I'm gonna do five and a half inches and kind of see how it looks before I start the button hole. So let's chain one and then work uh, 10 half double crochet across and that'll be the width of the strap. That's going to allow enough width to attach my uh, what I'm using for a button you can use whatever you want I'm using a little wood bead I just I like the look of those all right just did one two three four I'll do six more Not too, too wide, otherwise it's going to bunch up around whatever it is you're wrapping on, if you're doing that um, kind of scarf kind of closure. So, eight, two, three, two more, nine, and ten. Oops, I lost my yarn over on that tenth stitch. There we go. Okay, so your button's going to go on this portion of your closure. Let's see, here's my width. I'm gonna put this, well, it'll be up just a little bit higher, and then it'll come and wrap around. So uh, you can go, if, it, if room allows, you can go a little bit more narrow if you like the look of that. I don't think you can really go wrong either way. So chain one, turn, and then I'll keep working these half double crochets across until I get to five and a half inches. That's what I've decided for the length I want. You can go test it on your, whatever it is you're going to hang it on and see if that will be enough with the button closure. And then there will be additional space worked for the buttonhole opening. So the hole opening will come at the end of this strap as it comes around, that's where the, um, buttonhole will be and then it'll attach to your button on this on the base and I'll put a little visual of that up here because I can do that in editing so you can see what I'm talking about I know visual that's why you watch videos right and ten Alright, so I'll be back as I get to my correct length and we'll start looking at making a buttonhole. I want to point out when you're working your end stitch, because it's only a chain one and turn, it's going to look kind of tight. Just count across and see where you're at. So if it looks like you're at the end, just double check if you're at nine and you need to put in that last stitch, do that. I don't want to do a chain two turn with a half double crochet. It's going to make this very loose. I generally just do a chain one with all of my half double crochet rows. It's just a designer's preference. And it doesn't count as a stitch either. It's just to turn the work. So watch that. Otherwise, it's going to end up <laughs> starting to as you go up go into a point and that's not what we're going for we want a straight even strap here I'm at the end I'm gonna work into that last side that chain one turn stitch that looks a little slanted just to get my straight edge all right this is how you're going to check the size that you want or rather the length here so I've got a, mine's fairly thin. I know some of the newer models of fridges have a thicker handle. So turn it to the wrong side if there is one. They should look about the same. Push this through. 
then spin this to the right side and wrap. Okay, so this is where I'm going to start my button hole. The button will be here, so there's still some room for it to come to that because I'm going to create the split coming. We'll work, work on that next, and then the little bit of a tab that'll come to here. So that's how you're going to check. Mine's right at about five inches right now. I'm going to use a visual aid to show you what we're going to be doing. A little rudimentary drawing here. So I've got 10 stitches, which is these 10 right here. Mark that in 10. And then now <clears throat> I've got to do, I've got to create these spaces, right? And you can't just chain and skip because then when you come back, you're going to have a line there. So what I'm going to do, find uh, something to mark this. sheet of paper. I'm going to work one side. These are even right down the middle. And then as I get down here with these skip spaces and narrowing to a tip, I will come back and work the opposite side back up and build it up. We can do that together. So be really quick finishing steps. Okay, so to begin this, I'm now going to work single crochet because we don't need all this length here to finish this and i'm going to cover up the half that i'm not working so let's completely i do a blue line and just on oh, erase down the middle so it's exactly the same on both sides but let's just not look at that other side just yet so i'm right here there's 10 stitches. I need to work these three. And then that's my skip spaces where they are the unworked spaces that will be the buttonhole. So to start, I'm going to skip the first stitch. So this, see, it's skipped. There's nothing there. And work the three dots, three single crochet. One, two. And three. Chain one turn and work the three back. One, two, three. Chain one. And then I've got another set of three. All right, now let's see, I've done my three here. Let me mark that. So now I'm going to just slip around here to go over to the other side. One, two, three. Slip these two center stitches. One, two, And then for this side, this is where I'm at at this point. I'm here. So I need to work three sets of three single crochet. My yarn's splitting a little bit. Whoops. All right. That wasn't good. <laughs> All right, again. Um, Slip these two in the middle. That's the buttonhole space. And then three single crochet. Two, three. These three. Chain one turn. 
three again. One, two, three. One, two, and three. One, and let's see where we're at. Okay, so I finished my buttonhole. I'm going to go up. So you'll see I'm skipping this first stitch and I will work six single crochet across. Chain one, okay, skip that one. So there's two. Stitch is a little tight. Two here. And then there's no stitch here because that's the space. So I'm going to chain two. These two will be. I have my eraser on. These two will be a chain two. Just empty. One, two. And then connect it again with the first two. Of the next section and there's our buttonhole One, two skipping that last stitch see it's trying to narrow chain one turn so I hear my cat is awake and then six single crochet so I did these six and now I'm doing these six here One, two, and then work into this space. So I'll help reinforce it. And then two more. One and two. And then the next is four. We'll chain one. Since we just did six, I'm going to skip the first and the last to make four. And then there's just the two left. So chain one, skip the first, and then do the middle two, skip the last. Okay, and then we have our point. It should look like this terrible drawing, but it's also a point. And then when it comes around to close, it should fit like this or forward like this. Now because this side doesn't, I had to skip and it has, it's a little gappy there, I'm going to run some slip stitches just to make that look a little bit more finished. I'm going to look back here. And that looks a little better. 
and you can do that on the other side too. Okay, so I've reattached the yarn. Bring it in here. One extra end to weave in, but that's okay. It's really snug. Area. I'm trying to make it look a little bit more smooth. And I think I have to come out a little bit more for that. Much better. Okay, so next, weave in those ends. But also, um, this is where I had done the yarn join. That's why you see that there. So now, on the, if you have a side that you like the way it looks better, you'll attach your bead or your button here near the right near the base. And like this is where I started with the yarn, so I'm gonna make that be my back and then attach. All right, so putting my bead in, I'll show you. So I have it here centered, almost at the base, not quite. Just pull this around snug. It's facing up like that. I'm going to knot, this is the back side. No one's going to see this. I'm going to knot it on here. Hanger. 